he comes, here he comes, then the trumpets, then the drums, here he comes, on the long Cassidy, here he When the Prescott gang started their reign of terror, they made every other criminal in the territory seem like a rank amateur. Frank Prescott struck lightning fast, leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. And the price on his head increased with every daring crime. My saddle partner, Red Connors, and I were called in to try to track down the elusive outlaw who was now wanted on a federal charge. We gathered all the information we could from townsfolk and businessmen who had fallen victim to Prescott's almost insane urge for money. We picked up his trail, but he always seemed just one jump ahead of us. Until on a road just a few miles outside of Twin Rivers, we interrupted what turned out to be Frank Prescott's last armed robbery. All right, throw down the money. Saved the payroll the stage carried, but one man was dead, another wounded, and Frank Prescott was still on the loose. We got the stage driver to Twin Rivers and under the able care of Dr. Glenn Scott and Nurse Nancy Matthews, who in a few more hours were to become man and wife. Well, at least that holdup got Red and I back in time for your wedding. <laughs> We're glad you could make it, Hoppy. In the meantime, we'd better get a new guard for that driver. Don't forget, the wedding starts at 3 o'clock. Don't you worry, Nancy. We'll be back for that. He's <laughs> not going to miss that wedding cake. friend of Frank's, Doc. He wants to see you. The only place I want to see Frank is behind bars. This ain't no social call. Your brother's hurt bad and he needs a doctor. Where is he? I'll take you to him. Just get the bag. I'm getting married at 3 o'clock. Then I'll see Frank. Hold it, Doc. You're going now. What about my fiance? You'll just have to leave her waiting at the church. I can't do that. This gun says you will. Now, shall we get the bag? Uh, just a minute, Doc. Is this standard equipment, or did you have plans? Just have it when I ride the roads at night. Look, my friends will get suspicious when I don't show up. Yeah. Yeah, they might. So that they don't get worried enough to follow you, why don't you write out a note saying you're out on a case? And uh, one more thing, Doc. What's that? Bring along a death certificate. <laughs> understand why my son's so late. Well, Charles, you know what a doctor's life is. But after all, this is his own wedding and no word. I know. 
Try not to worry about it, Nancy. Red and I will go and see if we can find out what's keeping him. We'll be back in a minute. case. See you later, Glenn. Well, he certainly doesn't seem very concerned for a man that's supposed to be getting married right now. You know, I hope this emergency case doesn't keep him away too long. Something wrong here, Red. We'd better get back and tell the others. you came. I wouldn't want nobody but my doctor brother patching me up. Could have picked a better time than eat patching. I was supposed to get married this afternoon. Oh? Sorry I upset your plans. You've been doing that all your life. How's Pa? As well as could be expected. What with worrying about you for the past few years. What's he got to worry about? I changed my name, didn't I? Nobody knows I'm really Frank Scott. You can't change the fact that you're his son. And a murderer. One who'll end up at Hangman's tree. Shut up. Nobody's putting a rope around my neck. They'll never take me alive. If you want that arm fixed, settle down. Better wear that in a sling. You were lucky this time, Frank. One of these days, you'll catch a bullet where it counts. Then you'll really have use for the death certificate I brought along. I got use for it now, Glenn. What are you talking about? My death certificate. You're going to sign it. I'm what? You heard me right. As a $10,000 reward for my capture, dead or alive, I plan on collecting it. You're crazy. I won't sign it. Oh, yes, you will. Or your wedding plans might be interrupted permanently. Why, something might even happen to your intended bride. I believe you mean that. You're rotten clear through, Frank. Just a doctor's diagnosis. Now, you listen here to me. You're going to stay here till tomorrow morning. Then you'll go into Twin Rivers and you'll say just what I tell you to. What makes you think I won't tip off the marshal? I don't think you will, Glenn. My boys will see to that. As a matter of fact, they're going to collect the reward for killing me. picked up Prescott's trail after you and Red broke up the stage robbery. Wounded him in a gunfight. I worked all night to save Prescott's life, but it wasn't any use. Here's the death certificate. Where's the body? About six feet underneath the ground, out at a place called Lambert's Folly. Lamborn's Folly? That's right. About 50 yards from the old ranch house there. Now, just a minute. You dug a grave and buried Frank Prescott at Lamburn's Folly. Is that right? We can show you the exact spot. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to see it before I turn in a report. Uh, what about the reward? When do we get that? Oh, don't worry. You'll get what's coming to you. Oh, Glenn. Hello, Nancy. Dad. I'm sorry about yesterday. Oh, what happened? You had us worried, son. Well, everything's all right. I'll, I'll explain later. The doctor had a busy night of it. Frank Prescott was the emergency case he was called out on. Yeah, these two here claim they killed Prescott. Want the reward. Dad! Dad. 
Doctor, what do you suppose brought that on? I don't know. It was a shock of hearing... Nancy, I've got to get him over to my office. Let me help you. The minute they mentioned that Prescott was buried six feet under at Lamborn's Folly, I knew that the story about his death was a phony. But when Charles Scott collapsed on hearing of the alleged killing, I was puzzled and wanted to find out why a respected man like Dr. Scott was mixed up in an attempted fraud. Come on, I want to have a look at that Lambert's folly. Sure, Mark. I'll stay here. Maybe I can give the doc a hand. Yeah, maybe you can. Let's go. We rode out to Lamborn's Folly and were shown the grave where Frank Prescott was six feet under. There it is. Let's have a look at the inside of the ranch house. Sure. Oh, no, just routine. Place looks the same to me, Hoppy. Uh, a little more run down, but I guess that's natural. There's been nobody here to look at the place since Lambert left about eight years ago. Well, my partner and I figured that sleeping in here is better than sleeping out in the open. Yeah, I guess that's right. Well, come on, Red, let's go. When are you going to send in that report, Marshal? Me and my partner can use the money. Didn't anyone ever tell you not to count your chickens before they're hatched? What do you mean? We got Prescott, didn't we? Come on, Red. Frank, it looks like they're falling for it. I'm not so sure. Cassidy's got something on his mind. I tried to gun him down from up there, but you were right in my line of fire. What makes you think he's wise? I don't know. I just don't like it. Here. Cassidy? That's right. And don't miss. You're the boss. Suppose that fella shooting at us. Well, uh, maybe he's just trying to make that story about killing somebody come true. Why don't we just round them up? We know they're lying. Frank ain't any more buried there in Lambert's Folly than I am. Ah, uh, but so long as they think we don't know that, they'll stick around for the reward. Friend, the thing that bothers me is why the Scots are mixed up with Prescott. Scott. Prescott. I think I've got it. Come on. Doesn't respond. He's tried everything. He won't believe Frank's alive. Well, get your brother here and show him. 
Oh, I told you about Frank. Nancy, he's a mad dog. Who else would scheme to collect his own reward money? But it's his father, too, and he can't refuse to come. Surely he has some decency left. That's worth a try if it means Dad's life. Well, how's the old man? He's dying. We've got to get Frank. You don't take orders so well, do you, Doc? Or maybe you forgot. Frank is dead. It ain't healthy for the little lady to know any different. Save your threats. Just get my brother here. You've got to. It's the only chance of saving his father's life. Oh, I don't know. Frank won't like this. You tell him if he doesn't come, I'll disclose everything. He won't disclose anything, Doc. If I write out, you go with me. He can't go now. Then I don't go either. I'll go with you. Nancy. It's the only way, Glenn. We have no other choice. You've got to stay here with your father. Say, that's a better idea. When Frank gets his 10,000, you get the girl back. Fair enough? Hmm. Now, ain't that a pretty picture? Come on. Working on the theory that most every family keeps a photographic record, Red and I rode the Charles Scott's ranch, and it didn't take long to find what I was looking for. Ah, uh, there it is. Glenn and brother Frank. Hell. Frank Prescott is the doctor's brother, there's no doubt about it. That explains why the doc's mixed up in this. Yeah, and it also explains why Charles Scott had an attack when he heard about Prescott's death. You suppose the doc's in for a cut of the 10,000? I hope not, Red. We're gonna find out right now. the doctor told us the truth about his part in the fantastic scheme hatched by his brother, Frank. He filled us in on all the details and told us that Nancy was being held hostage out at Lamborn's Folly. Well, come on, let's go get her. Oh, wait a minute. Frank said he'll never be taken alive. If he doesn't get here, Dad will die. Oh, we won't stop, Frank, but I want you to promise to stall him here until we get back from Lamborn's Folly. Well, that's kind of a tall order, Hoppy. He's his brother, you know. Well, Frank wouldn't ride in to save father's life if it weren't for fear of losing that 10,000. You have my word, Hoppy. Thanks, Doc.
Did you have to bring that? The only thing I know for sure I can trust. Dad. Dad. Frank's here. Dad, listen. Frank's alive. You've got to hear me. Frank's alive. He's here. You've got to hear me. Frank's alive. He's here. Try to understand. Uh, you're wasting your breath. Dad, Dad. Frank's alive. He's here. Coming out of it. See, Dad? It's Frank. He'll be all right now. Good. And I'm leaving. Wait. For what? Someone else to collect the $10,000 reward? Frank, give yourself up. Stop all this robbing and killing. I didn't come here for fatherly advice. Wait a minute, Frank, you can't go now. Can I? guns out there. Well, if they use them, you'll be the first one to drop. Move out, Cassidy. My boys have the girl. If I don't get back, she dies. It won't work, Frank. My deputy's on his way into town with your two gunmen right now. And the girl is with him. And the doctor's with me. We're going out of here together. Put away your guns, or I'll kill him. All right, Frank, you win. decision your father had to make, but I guess he figured it was either your life or Frank's. He's a pretty brave man, Hoppy. I know. He wants the reward money divided among the families who suffered from Frank's outlawry. He would think of that. What made you suspicious of Glenn's story? Well, Frank did make one little mistake in the spot he picked to be buried in, six feet under. Yeah, that Lamborn farm has only got a foot and a half of topsoil. Underneath that, there's, there's nothing but solid rock. <laughs> That's why they called it Lamborn's Folly. Well, we'll see you later. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Hi, my little partners. I want to ask you a very serious question. Are you afraid of policemen? You're not, huh? Well, that's good. You shouldn't be. Always remember that those men have had a lot of training, have put in a lot of years to learn how to help protect you. And one more thing, don't ever call a policeman a cop. He doesn't like it and it doesn't sound good. Respect him as he does you. Call him a police officer and see how much nicer he'll be. I'll see you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to go to Sunday school. There he goes, on his way, down the moonlit trail to where cowboys ray. Hop along, Cassidy, hop along, Cassidy, he'll return soon.
soon again. There's no use to say goodbye until then. Hop along, Cassidy.